how do I get this made? And what I thought I would do, uh, because I had all the tool bags were made over in China. None of the bags are made here in the U.S. And so I didn't have a connection with China. And so I thought what I would do is license it to existing tool bag companies because they were already had the connection in China. And because my bag had three toolings, toolings are these big heavy steel blocks that get bolted into injection molding machine to make the, the components or the parts. So there are three, there are three toolings there because there are three injection molded parts. Number one, the base. Number two, the injection molded plastic handle. And then number three, the rubber over molded ergonomic grip that was made out of what's called TPR, thermoplastic rubber. So it's like a rubber material. That grip was very important to me. Rather than having two floppy webbed handles, uh, this rubber ergonomic grip gave you a positive connection to a loaded tool bag. And so it was just, it was like almost like a spiritual connection because you grab that handle and with a weighted tool bag and you know that you are connected with your bag. And so that, that grip and that handle was very important. And you didn't have, like the, the other bags, you had to, it took two hands. You had to grab one hand, one floppy webbed handle and the other one, then bring them together. Then you could hold it with two hands. So that at the end of the day, when you're cleaning up, say you got a 50 foot extension cord, a worm drive saw, a four foot level tucked under your arm and you go over to pick up your tool bag, you go, ah, and you got to put everything down, take your two hands, bring the two handles together. Then you can carry it with one hand. Then you got to pick up your stuff you just put down. With my bag, you can pick up everything and grab it with one hand. So anyway, so it was for me, it was like I could license it to these guys and we go off to the races. I got rejected because they felt that the expense of the toolings, which are expensive, they would never get the return on their investment because the price of the tool bag would be too high to get the return on their investment and nobody would buy it. So I got rejected by them. I have no connection with China. How am I going to make that connection? And there, on the Darien Norwalk line, there was a what's called a sports authority. It's now like what's I don't think they exist anymore, but it's it's like a thick sporting good. And so I went. I decided to go in there and look at any bags that had any kind of cool innovation and blah blah blah. And so I went to the uh, section where all the backpacks were. They were all hanging up on a pegboard there, and you know they were all deflated. And looking at the OGO brand, which had a lot of innovation, Jan Sport. Uh, a couple of the other ones, I forgot what those are called, but they were backpacks and they didn't have plastic bottoms. And so I headed over towards the uh, weightlifting area there and, you know, looking at gym bags and nothing, they're just like duffel bags and nothing innovative about those bags at all, very basic. And then I went to walking through the golf bag aisle and that's when I got struck by lightning. And I said, that's it. Whatever factory makes a golf bag could make this tool bag because golf bags all have plastic bottoms and the fabric body fits over the rim and it gets riveted to the plastic bottom. I don't play golf, so I ripped the tags off, stuffed them in my shirt, which I shouldn't have done, but I was. this is like, I don't know, this is it. <laughs> so I uh, went home and I called up, it was like Titleist, Callaway, uh, TaylorMade, OGO, Ping, Wilson, and asked to speak with their corporate attorneys and it was through TaylorMade, the corporate attorney was a woman and uh, said that I have an idea for a tool bag but it needs to be uh, manufactured in a golf bag factory because it has a plastic bottom also has a plastic handle with over molded rubber grip. She called me back the next day and gave me a name of a guy out in Newport Beach, California. And she said, Roger, here's his number. His name is George Watkins. And I called George up, gave him a basic rundown of the idea, ask him to sign an NDA, which he did. And then he said, send out your drawings. And I said, I want to come out and meet you in person and discuss this in person. So I flew out to LAX. He came to the airport, picked me up, took me back to his office, spent a couple hours with him. He was stationed in Southeast Asia because he was in the army dealing with army intelligence. And to do the army intelligence, he had to learn to speak Chinese. So he spoke fluent Chinese. And when he retired from the army, he worked for McDonnell Douglas selling helicopters for three years, but then kind of planted the seed that with his language skills, his Chinese language skills, that he could set up his own business sourcing for American golf bag brands over in China. And uh, so that's what he did. <clears throat> and all the corporate headquarters for the golf bag companies are basically based in LA. So he was in the hot, hot spot, sweet spot there. So anyways, he's a sharp guy. He's, he 
understood what I was trying to accomplish. And he said, Roger, I got to leave for China in about a month. Uh, we'll take your drawings and we'll get something started. So it took probably about, I don't know, it, took, it was a while. It took about three months. And then he called me up and he said, Roger, he said, I, I got the first round sample and I'm going to send it to you. So he over FedEx overnight it to me and, you know, I'm waiting, foaming at the mouth for this thing to show up. And uh, so it finally came and I opened it up. And so there was there we didn't give any I didn't give any uh, information for the injection mold, the bottom or the handle of the grip. So what they did was to replicate the bottom. They just took half inch particle board and shot it together with a finish nail gun. So the soft side of the bag fit over this rectangular box made out of particle board. The handle was just a rough cut out particle board, too. But when you unzipped it, the way they stitched the vertical tiered pockets, which kind of grow out of each other, it was just, to me, it was like, perfect. That's just what I want. It was awesome. So that just, you know, gave me a lot of uh, encouragement that, you know, this, this is headed in the direction that, you know, this is awesome. I'm getting this made over there. It was about a week later, he said they need the information to do the injection molded tooling to make the bottom and the handles. He said, let's start with the bottom first. So I had no idea this would have been in 2001. I had no idea that these this could be done with computer generated program called SolidWorks and you send them the 3D file and they can make it. I didn't know that. So I figured out the bottom, the width of the bag should be about nine and a half inches. 12 inches wide, it was too wide. Put you six inches in the center. I want the bag to hang ergonomic to your body. So it came, you know, it's like 12 inches too wide, 11 inches too wide, 10, eh. Nine and a half was kind of like, it just felt right. Cause then you're four and three quarters into the center of the bag. So the bag is ergonomic to your body, walking through doorways, moving in around a building. So I went to the lumber yard and I bought some number 12, uh, or rather uh, number two, uh, one by 12 pine and ripped it nine and a half inches wide and a table saw. And then I figured for the length, because the bottom row of pockets, which are about five inches deep, each one was five inches wide. So it's 16 inches. And then I figured a quarter of an inch for uh, the body fabric buildup. So I was 16 and a half inches and chopped these pieces 16 and a half inches long and took four pieces and glued them up, clamped them up, glued them up, let them uh, set up overnight. In the morning, scraped all the excess glue off it, belt sanded it flush all the way around, and then screwed a board to the bottom, screwed the board into a log, and then took my round over uh, router bed and rounded all the vertical corners all around the bottoms and then routed out a foot, a little foot that elevated the base above. It was probably about uh, maybe a quarter, quarter of an inch uh, uh, thick and then um, sanded the whole thing, put a coat of satin finish urethane, took a Sharpie, wrote my name, phone number on it, and then uh, put two more coats of uh, satin urethane to lock it in, and then sent them the block of wood. They made the tooling from the block of wood. But, and then he said, okay, now we need the information for the handle. And for the handle, I said, okay, now I gotta make the handle. So I made the handle which comes out and around like this out of uh, half inch paint grade birch plywood. Is this close to, is this close to the original? The the handle's close to the it's original. Close to the, the original. Right. Yeah. This bag's a little bit smaller than the original. The first one was the model XL. But this this is all made out of birch plywood. Half inch per, uh, paint grade birch plywood. Some scraps that I had left over. So then for this, this is made out of maple, a solid piece of maple, and I cut that out and then cut it in half lengthwise and cored it out so it would fit over this. And then all the ergonomic detail on here, I drew that out with a pencil. And so to do all that, I bought this little tool. It's like a dentist tool, um, which is called a Dremel tool. And um, the day that I was gonna cut all, all that out. Had you, had you figured out the name by then? Uh, yes. Okay. Yep. And how did how did tell the story? Uh, how did you come up with Vito Propac? Yes, uh, I was I was thinking of these names like you know, like you know black oak bags, or, you know testosterone loaded names like black oak bag or black bear bags or something, and 
Gorilla bag. <laughs> <A> gorilla bag. <laughs> rhino bag. I didn't like that. And I just started thinking, well, you know, the big thing that this bag does is it stores all the tools vertically with the vertical tiered pockets. And so I started thinking, okay, vertical tool organization, vertical tool orientation. They're protected, they're packed, protected in the bag that zips up, they're packed, they're ready to go to work. And then I just shortened it to an anacronym, which is V, Vita, which is vertical tool organization protected and packed. So it's an acronym. And then I figured I'd get an extra marketing bump when in the newspaper you see that Congress vetoes this bill and blah, 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 so that, you know, all guys now they just call it my veto on that too. So that's where the name came from. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Subscribe to my channel. Also, visit my website and you can see what online locksmith training I have for beginners, intermediate, and advanced, as well as my covert methods of entry and my non-destructive methods of entry.